Hello and welcome back to the DIY hosting of an email server video series. Currently in this video series, we're exploring how we can make sure that emails we send from our Raspberry Pi hosted email server end up in our recipient's inbox and not their spam box. In the last video, we made a little bit of progress, but we've got much more to do. Now, before I go on, I just want to raise to your attention my Patreon account. If you're interested in accessing videos that are not available on YouTube, would like one-to-one -one support with me, would like to suggest content, or if you would just like to support my work, please do visit my Patreon account. Okay, in the last video, we explored a web-based tool which enabled us to test the quality of our emails. In our first test, we achieved 1.7 out of 10, not a very good score at all. So our objective now is to improve on that until we manage to get it up to 10 out of 10. At the end of the last video, we adjusted our postfix configuration to ensure that our EHLO greeting on sent emails contained a fully qualified domain name, also known as FQDN for short. It was a simple change. In fact, it was the simplest of changes that we're going to make to get this score up to 10 out of 10. Yet, despite it being really simple, it had a profound effect on our score. So let's have a look at what this change did by opening a browser and visiting mail-tester.com again, and we'll repeat the same process as we did before to show what our new score is. Okay, so navigate to this page, mail-tester.com in your preferred browser, and then copy the email address provided on the screen here. Yours will be different, of course. And then write an email as you did previously, making sure the content of your email that you're going to send appears legitimate and doesn't resemble any kind of spam mail that you would send, otherwise you'll get penalized when the score comes back for having a poorly constructed email. Then send the email to this address and when you've sent it, click the button beneath that says then check your score. Okay, once you've done that, you'll get a score and hopefully it'll look something like this. Okay, hopefully you've also got the same score as me. As you can see, we've made quite a bit of progress for such a simple change, at least by the standards of this testing service. We are now up to 6.7 out of 10, and our little boat graphic is simply lost at sea rather than shipwrecked, so that seems like a lot of progress. The text at the top of the screen says that some inboxes might still refuse you. In all honesty, that's highly, highly optimistic the vast majority will still refuse your emails, unfortunately. So we must continue on our journey. So in this video, we're going to make another change to improve our score a little bit further. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to ensure we have a sender policy framework configured for our email server to authenticate our emails with an SPF record. This involves making two changes one to our DNS settings over in Cloudflare and another change in Postfix so that Postfix can use it. Sender Policy Framework or SPF is a simple email validation system designed to detect email spoofing. It's an authentication protocol which allows senders to specify which IP addresses are authorized to send emails on behalf of a domain. So in my case, I'd like to specify that my IP address alone is allowed to send an email on behalf of my single-entity.com domain, just my router's IP address and nobody else's. Okay, so let's get going. Step one is to navigate to your Cloudflare account via a web browser. So do that first, open a web browser and navigate to your Cloudflare account, and then open the tab for the DNS settings. I'll drag my window over now to show you what what I'm going to do and what the changes should look like. Okay, so here's my Cloudflare DNS settings page for my single-entity.com domain. What you can see here are the records I've created previously as part of my hosting of a WordPress website and hosting of an email server video series. Um, I've got a series of A records and an MX record. We're going to add another record now. So if you click on the add record button, it'll expand this window here and we're going to add a type text record so if you click on type and scroll down to text txt click 
on that. It'll change the layout so it won't be familiar to what you've used before, but what we're going to do is quite simple. It even tells us here what we want to use for root, which is the at symbol. So in name, I want you to add the at symbol, which means it's for the root of our domain. Okay, and then in the content, we're going to add the following. So type as I type, v equals spf1. So v equals spf1 without any spaces, and then a space, mx, space, and then you need a tilde, which is the wibbly line, followed by the word all, a l l. Okay, so just to repeat, v equals spf1, then a space, mx, then a space, a tilde, and then all, a l l. And once you've done that, click on the save button. Okay, so now you should see a new entry in your DNS settings that says a text type entry for your domain, in my case, single-entity.com, and then you should have the content looking just like this. So just check yours is exactly the same as mine. Okay, so that's the DNS settings part of this video done. We're now going to head over to my desktop where we're going to make a couple of small changes to the postfix configuration so that it knows that we're using an SPF record. Okay, so I've just opened up my PowerShell on my Windows desktop. Hopefully you've got your shell ready to go. And I'm going to SSH into my Raspberry Pi using my SSH alias Pi that I set up in the uh, website hosting portion of my video series. Okay, with that done, the first thing we need to do is install an additional Postfix plugin which is for the policy SPF for postfix. So I'm going to do as follows, sudo apt install, which is a fairly common command, uh, which hopefully you're now very familiar with, postfix hyphen policy D hyphen SPF hyphen Python. So that's sudo apt install postfix hyphen policy D hyphen SPF hyphen Python. Once done, press the Enter key. Now for me, I already have it installed, but you will have to press yes if you haven't got it installed to confirm the installation. And once done, we then just need to edit two configuration files. And both of these configuration files we've edited before. We're going to start with the master configuration file for Postfix. And I'm going to use the nano text editor as I normally do for editing uh, configuration files. So I'm going to type in sudo nano and then slash etc slash postfix slash master.cf. So that's etc postfix master.cf. Press enter. So you should be familiar with this file already. In fact, we edited it not long ago when we added spam assassin, which you can see here. In this case, I'm going to page down right to the bottom of the uh, right to the bottom of the file where I'm going to add a new line. So I'm going to press enter to create a space and then I'm going to add a new line as follows. Now, you're welcome to look at the screen here and to copy that into your terminal if you wish what I've just pasted in. But to save you the risk of typos with such a complex uh, line, um, I'm going to include it in the description of the video for you. But that line needs to be added to your master configuration file. Okay, and once you're happy with that, save your file, which for me is Control O or Control S, however you wish. And then I'm going to exit from Nano. Okay, so great. That's another thing done. Now we need to add a couple of bits to the main configuration file for Postfix. This is more of a modification rather than a complete addition. You'll see what I mean in a moment. So I'm again going to use nano. So I'm going to use sudo nano slash etc slash postfix slash main.cf. And this file will be very familiar to you. So I'll press enter and go into the nano text editor. And I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of this file using the page down key. 
um, and I'm going to find a line that says smtpd underscore recipient underscore restrictions. This is a line that we've created ourselves. I'm going to press enter to create a new space and above this line I'm going to add the following. So type as I type policy d hyphen spf so that's policy d hyphen spf underscore time underscore limit space equals space 3600 so that's policy d hyphen spf underscore time underscore limit space equals space 3600 okay with that done we're now going to edit the smtpd recipient restrictions line so i'm going to go down to the end of reject or north destination and i'm going to add a comma to say that we're going to add an additional line here or additional argument i'm going to press enter i'm going to press tab to keep it nice and organized and be consistent and i'm going to type in the following so type as i type check underscore policy underscore service space unix so that's check underscore policy underscore service space unix colon private forward slash policy d hyphen spf so check underscore policy underscore service space unix colon private forward slash policy d hyphen spf okay so we're basically telling you um telling postfix that we're going to be using the spf policy uh, that we installed the plugin for um, a few minutes ago okay great so as ever save your text file following the changes we go out back to the uh, command line and we need to restart the postfix service. So I'm going to type in sudo service postfix restart, press enter. And as ever, once you've restarted any of your services, it's a very good idea to check that it's still working as you expect it to. So using the up key on my keyboard, I'll remove restart and I'll change that to status. And as you can see by the green active, we know that the postfix service is running, which means it's accepted our configuration changes so that we know it's working as it should. So I'm going to clear my screen because I think it's getting a bit cluttered and I like to stay organized. Okay, so the last thing we need to do now that we've changed our postfix configuration to use the SPF policy and we've added a text record for our SPF policy, we just need to check and see if it's made a difference to make sure that Mail Tester has identified that we've been more compliant with their expected standards to make our emails be considered valid. So I'm going to drag my window in here that we had before where I've got 6.7 out of 10. So if you get yours up, the same thing you had previously, you can now press a button on the screen that says refresh and it will use the same email you sent. In my case, it was called Lost Cat. Um, and it'll rescan everything as it did before. Now, because we've made a change to our DNS server, which is what mail tester is going to look for, it should immediately find an improvement. So if you click the refresh button, excellent. So I've got an improved <coughs> picture and an improved score. So hopefully you've got the same. You've got a nice sunshine in the top left hand corner. I do appreciate the graphics they created for this service. Um, and everything looks quite nice on our on our little boat. We've scored 7.7 .7 out of 10. And of course, we've not had to send a new email. And that's because sending a new email would not help in this case. We've not made any changes that would need to be validated by sending another email. OK, hopefully you've enjoyed this. If you have found this video useful, please do like it. If you find my video series useful, please do subscribe to my channel. It's the best metric I have for if people are enjoying the material. Um, please do check out my Patreon account if you want to have access to my videos early. I release videos onto YouTube at certain subscriber intervals. Um, otherwise, they sit in my Patreon account for my patrons to benefit from early. So please do visit my Patreon account if you want to access the videos immediately. 
Uh, thanks again, and I will see you in the next video.